There are many everyday objects that are made out of metal. But the metals that are used to make these products are not just found naturally in big lumps around the world. These metals are locked up in rocks and we need to be able to extract, which means take out the metals from those rocks in order to make this variety of objects. So metals are found in rocks in the earth's crust. To extract the metal from the rocks you first need to dig up the rocks and when we dig for rocks and build these massive quarries it has an environmental impact in terms of habitat loss and also an, in, an environmental impact in terms of the machinery contributing to global warming which is why as much as we can we need to recycle the metals that we've already extracted rather than digging up loads more rock to find new metal. Rocks that you can extract metals from are called ores and you can't see the metal because the metal is bonded to another element to make a compound. To extract the metal from the rock you have to do a chemical reaction and to extract the metal from its compound you could do a displacement reaction and to know which reactions we can do we need to use the reactivity series. Here's the reactivity series of metals and in red I'm going to place an element that is a non-metal called carbon. Carbon is a black powdery substance and it's a very cheap and readily available chemical. So it's really useful in the process of extracting metals. So if you wanted to extract iron from iron oxide, you could react it with carbon in a displacement reaction. For the displacement reaction, you would heat the carbon and iron oxide together in a chamber. And because carbon is more reactive than iron, it will displace the iron and the products would be iron plus carbon dioxide. So you can see here the iron that was stuck to the iron oxide in a rock-like compound when heated with carbon, which is this black substance here, you can extract the metal. So now you have iron on its own. So you can use that for things such as building tools and bridges. And then you have carbon dioxide as your byproduct. Displacement reactions with carbon can only be used to extract metals that are less reactive than carbon. So you can use carbon if you wanted to extract zinc from its ore or iron or lead or copper or silver. For example, lead oxide plus carbon would make lead plus carbon dioxide. So the lead has been displaced and it will now be left in shiny chunks for you to collect and use at the end of the reaction. And copper oxide plus carbon would make copper and carbon dioxide. And copper is really useful metal. We're running out of it a lot because we use it a lot for pipes and wiring and things like that. So there's not many good ores left in the world containing lots of copper. So we really, really must be recycling the copper that we're using. You notice I've left out gold here. And that's because we don't need to do a displacement reaction to extract gold. Because gold is unreactive. So gold is not found as a compound. Instead, you can just find gold naturally. You might have heard, for example, of people just sieving for gold in rivers because the gold will be shiny and stand out because it's not reacted with anything else to make that rock-like compound. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at GCSErevisionMonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at ScienceSurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.